So in terms of in terms of the charge that I say that all Muslims are radical Muslims, uh, I don't think you've paid close enough attention. Because the reality is, most times, and I'm not perfect, so maybe there's a few times that I've forgotten to make the distinction, but most times I actually do make a distinction between Muslims and radical Muslims, right? And I actually say that my, you know, the, the, the threat that we face and the political danger that we face is from radical Islam, right? But the point that I, I would say to you is that the difference between a radical Muslim, what the world calls a radical Muslim and, and, and what you might want to term just an ordinary Muslim, is that the radical Muslims are paying close attention to what their texts say. Right, don't put him on camera. Yeah, the, the radical Muslims are paying close attention to what their texts say and ordinary Muslims are not. You know, and I don't have a problem with Muslims who aren't radicalized. I still think that I need to ha talk to them and, and try to bring them to the Christian faith because they're on a one-way trip to hell. But, go on. Some woman told me that. She told me she's an Orthodox Christian. Yeah. She told me in her belief that Muslim people worship devils and they don't believe in this God. Yeah. They're going to hell. So I kind of got offended by that. Yeah, but it, because if yeah, you lived a good life, yeah. you're, you're a decent human being, you try to always stay away from sin, you help out in charity, you do the best that you can to yeah. help another person. Yeah. So why would that person go to hell? Because right, it's a, it's a really good question and it's a very fair question. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it's actually not just a question that you ask. If your intention is pure. Yeah, so, so let me uh, answer that. Because we believe that no one apart from the Spirit of God giving you the gift can love God as end, can hope in God as end, can, can have faith in God as end. That is the gift of the Holy Spirit into someone's life. So it's not actually possible except by the work of the Holy Spirit for you to do a good deed before God. All of your works before God are like filthy rags. You know, they're, they're, they're just filthy rags before the holiness of God. God has to make you and declare you holy before any of your works can merit any kind of reward. And so if you don't have faith in God, if you don't have hope in God, if you don't follow God in any way, are you listening, bro? Yeah, if you, if you, don't, if you don't do these things, then none of your works count for anything, right? If I, if I have a glass of water and I put a drop of cyanide in it, is that water good for you? Is it drinkable? Right. So the holiness of God is like pure water, right? But all of your works are just a pollution. Whatever you stick in that pure water is a pollution to that water. And that's why none of us can do works that are worthy of God unless God has first declared us and made us righteous. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this, is, this is one of the key differences between Islam and Christianity. So I don't know if you know this. Do you know, I'm guessing you're a Muslim by what you've said. Yeah, yeah. Right. Or do you know as a Muslim, Islam teaches that you will go to hell? That I don't know about because right. what I know is, I don't really know much about my own religion. Yeah. To be honest with you, but I do some things. Yeah. So it's just basically the way I see it is the book just tells you to live your life in a good way. Yeah. Don't deceive people, don't lie, don't cheat, don't yeah. steal, don't yeah. 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 And just be good to the to your, your, your brothers in humanity, basically. Yeah. That's all it basically says. But then people, they make it look like it's an extreme religion. Well, it is. I mean, the thing is, clearly, I don't have, I, clearly I, I you're not. By it. Right. Clearly, you're. I've been reading it since a young. Like yeah. So, so let me, so, so let me point this out to you, right? He's still only got the camera on me, yeah. right? But let, let me point this out to you. Islam permits the buying and selling of slaves. Islam permits the idea of uh, secret polygamous marriages, right? Is, so, so my point to you is that my point to you is that if you actually follow what Islam teaches, you do become an extremist. 
Now you're clearly not tapping into that. You, 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 right? But, but as, as Christians, we believe that you shouldn't lie, you shouldn't steal, you shouldn't dishonor your mother and father, you shouldn't become intoxicated, you shouldn't have licentious sex outside of marriage. We believe in marriage between only man and one woman. We believe in treating our neighbors we want to be treated and loving our neighbor as we love ourselves. Now these are good things, right? Yeah. Right. So the thing is, in terms of, in terms of moral prescription, I would say that Christianity is a step above Islam. Islam teaches that you can lie to the unbeliever. Right, right. okay. Islam teaches, but, but more a fundamental problem, because you asked about salvation, right? So let's come to that. You believe in Allah's mercy, right? Right. And Allah's mercy is that your sins are forgiven, isn't it? If you repent. Right. But in Islam, it teaches that everyone will pass through hell at different speeds. So those whose deeds were only lightly bad will pass through hell quickly. I think you mean the, the bridge where you cross. That, 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 yes, that, 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 yeah. It, it, so you've got this punishment. There's none amongst you that won't be brought to it, is what the Quran states about hell. What we believe is, as you walk on that bridge, yep. it just depends on how good you were at night. So if you was a good person, but you had some sins, yeah. You cross, but then it'll be a bit different. Yeah. It's going to be an easy... And, th and that's according... Yeah. Sins. Right. So, no, it, it does depend on your sins. Yeah. It does. That's what I said. Right. So, so the point is, where's the forgiveness in that? I thought you were forgiven by Allah. No, you are, but then... So just, why is he punishing you? It's just... It's just uh, I don't know. Man. Exactly. So in Christianity, in Christianity, this is why we teach that... that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, right? If I was to, if I was to present my sal as an argument for my salvation, my works, my works wouldn't be sufficient. Just to, uh, and we would end up in a similar situation as you, like everyone goes to hell. But in Christianity, what happens is God redeems us in the person of his son through the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So the penalty of sin, that, 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 that debt that we owe to God, it, that curse that we're under is, is satisfied in Christ's crucifixion and death. And then that life that we need, we receive through his resurrection. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Right? So in your religion, you're told that you're forgiven, but then you're punished. In our religion, you're told that you're forgiven and then you are forgiven. And only those that refuse forgiveness are punished. Now, you wouldn't believe in something that's contradictory, would you? Right, well, I've just demonstrated to you a contradiction inside of Islam. Allah says you're forgiven, and yet he punishes you before you go to heaven. So that means that there's a contradiction right in the heart of Islamic teaching. Do you see what I'm saying? He doesn't want to be on film, so only film me. Yeah? So what's your name, bro? Mohammed, nice to meet you. Bob, nice to meet you, Mami. So this is your opportunity. If you've got any other questions about Christianity, yeah. One thing that just baffles me is, you know, when they say, so if Jesus died for sin, that means you're really from sin. Yes. So if that person hypothetically was to do something bad, like a bad sin, yeah, and he died on it, right. So you're talking about him sinning and then dying immediately? Yeah. Right. So this would be... Peace we wrote. Good to see you. So, so, so this, this would depend on, on the nature of the sin. Right? Obviously what you're saying is... Let, I, I will come up with a hypothetical situation. A man's committing adultery with his wife and in the act of sex with his adulteress, he has a heart attack and dies. Right? So this person has committed what we call a mortal sin. Bro, can you come in a bit? Because he don't want to be filmed. Come in a bit. Come in a bit, bro. Hey, he doesn't want to be on film. I am trying to keep you off film. But you, you come a bit, so I don't have to shout. Yeah? Right? So if someone, if someone dies because they've committed adultery, right? That is what we call a mortal sin. So they've literally turned away from God. And by turning away from God, they have walked away from God. 
if someone dies in that mortal sin, they're, they're destined to hell if they haven't repented. But there's also things that we call venial sins, right? Venial sins are sins that you do where you're not turning away from God. So for example, say you tell a white lie, or at home you, you, you pinch a slice of bread because you haven't got any bread and the shops are closed, right? Or you give in to laziness and you, you take a, a slice of bread. That's a sin. But God's... Yeah, it's what you would might call it a minor sin. It's called a venial sin, right? These kinds of sins are covered by the blood of the Lamb. Doesn't mean that you have license to keep on sinning. Christians don't believe that, right? But these are not sins that are going to condemn someone to hell. So does that answer your question? Right, do you have any other questions? That's it, man. That's it. I'm just, I don't really know much about the Christianity religion. Okay. But I'm a friend that I respect. So yeah. You have a conversation about religion. Usually I try to avoid the conversation because it starts an argument. And then yeah. People get rowdy and then they fight over their religion. Like yeah. Really support that. That's fine, Mohammed. And I, and I appreciate the manner and the tone with which you come and speak to me. But what, I, I, have you got a Bible? Uh, I, I, I would like to give you a Bible as a I gift. Actually, I appreciate it, but it's, Really take a Bible. Why not? Why can't you take a Bible? Is it a sin to take a Bible? No, no, it's not a sin. It's just, you know, it's, I'm going to have to explain to my parents why I've got a Bible. It's just going to be... Well, I'll tell you what then. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll give you this, right? What? It doesn't look like a gospel. It's just a gospel, but it doesn't look like one. Okay? And it is the gospel of... Which one is it? Bear with us one second. In fact, you see, it's so disguised, I don't even know which gospel it is. It's the Gospel of Luke. So have a read of that. And if you've got any questions that you want to come back and ask, feel free to come back and ask. I appreciate it. I'll also give you my card. And if you want to get in touch with me and talk away from the corner, more than willing to get in touch with me and we'll talk away from the corner. You look after yourself, Mohammed.